Welcome back. We are answering your questions about coronavirus with Wesley Long Hospital's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Jeffrey Hatcher. Remember, you can text your questions. The number is at the bottom of your screen. This question is, I got my second vaccination four weeks ago, so obviously they've got full immunity there. I will be visiting a friend this week who also has received both of her vaccinations. Do we need to wear masks if visiting inside? So the CDC guidelines uh, would say that you do not need to wear a mask in that situation in that specific situation. All right, this yep. next question is, do you anticipate this being a seasonal vaccine? Should we expect to go through this every year like we do with the flu shot? You know, I think that's a that's a great question. And I think that's what's on a lot of people's minds, including a lots of infectious disease physicians. Um, we don't know that. And some of that will depend on what happens with these variants. If we continue to get viral evolution and see lots of uh, new variants or the variants that we see now become more prevalent and more aggressive, um, then that may be a possibility that we'd need another vaccine or a booster of the vaccine to uh, help us fight off those infections. A follow up to that is this question that just came in. How many different kinds of variants are out there? So right now, the three major ones are the uh, UK strain, the South American strain, and the Brazilian strain. There are also a couple of variants from California and New York that have been described. Okay, because you said the three major ones, so that means that there are more than that out there, okay, that we might be hearing about later on. All right, this next question is, can I choose what kind of vaccine? As you said, that Cone has two kinds. They have Pfizer and Moderna. You will not be allowed to choose. And can you maybe explain why the way that, you know, the, the whole process works when you get in there and you're sitting down and things of that nature, why is that? Um, we consider them equivalent, um, and not only in terms of efficacy, but in terms of side effects. Um, so for us, there's really no difference in, in which one you would get. And it really is like clockwork. I mean, you've got people sitting in lines and then, you know, um, you've got the nurse going all the way down the line and then making sure that you don't have any kind of side effect afterwards. And it kind of really is a process there. So it's not like she's got vials of both things that she can just you right. know, say this or this. Yeah. All right. And I think until you actually go there to see it in person, it kind of just doesn't make sense until you see that process. Uh, so the next question is, if you tested positive with no symptoms, should you still wait 90 days before getting that vaccine? So I, that's a tricky question, because if you tested positive with no symptoms, I wouldn't know when you had become infected, right? When you had gotten sick or, or had any exposure. So I don't think there's a really clear guideline on what to do with it in that situation. I would say to be the safest, you could wait 90 days. Um, but again, if you don't have any baseline symptoms or baseline of when you think you were exposed, it's hard to know exactly when to, to give you that. Mm -hmm. This person says, I'd like to know if it is okay to travel to Florida. I have had my first vaccine. You probably would tell them not to go to spring break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'd be very hesitant about that. Um, there's a ton of gathering going on in Florida right now. Their governor is really struggling with keeping some of those crowds dispersed. Um, on top of that, after only having gotten one vaccine, if you would consider that you've gotten the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, you're really only about 75% protected, which is good. But after your second vaccine, you'll be up over 95%. So I would probably hold off on that right now um, and definitely consider very carefully about traveling out of state right now. Mm -hmm. And after, definitely after the second shot, and this was a follow-up, how effective is a two-shot vaccine after just receiving the first shot? You said 75% and about 95%? That's right. Okay, um, it says, how soon do we know will vaccines be available at local pharmacies? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure about when, when that will happen. You know, I know that Walgreens and CVS are heavily invested in this, um, but I don't know when they'll when that will happen. We'll just keep a watch for you and keep you posted. Uh, this next question is, do any sites have wheelchair available or can the shot be given while you're sitting in your car? Yeah, there. I know the FEMA site can do that and I'm pretty sure the Cohen site can do that as well. Okay, um, and so the FEMA site, because it is drive-through, the yeah. Cone site, someone would actually have to come out to your car. Is that correct? Yeah, someone will come out to your car at the mm -hmm. Cone site. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there are enough people there, volunteers, who are directing wherever you're going to say, hey, this is this is our situation that you need to know. Uh, yeah, the yeah, next exactly. question is, how long does the vaccine stay in your system? 
Um, so that's an interesting question because it could be answered a couple of different ways. One of the ways that you could ask that question is how long, for instance, does the uh, Moderna or the Pfizer vaccine mRNA portion of the vaccine stay in your body? And that's relatively short. I would say less than, you know, less than a day or two. How long does do you remain immune to what ha what you were given from that vaccine? We think it's around six months right now, but again, we're learning about this all the time. All right, and this is a, a very popular question the last couple of weeks. How um, does the vaccine affect your ability to conceive a child? Absolutely no difference, no effect on that. Um, and there, the other part of that that people are curious about is uh, how would it affect someone who is pregnant if they got the vaccine while they were pregnant? There are registry studies that are ongoing right now. We don't have any evidence that there are any adverse effects on people who are pregnant who are getting this vaccine. There are safety studies that have been done in animals and they, all of them have demonstrated safety. Mm -hmm. This person is asking, how does a person get the J&J &J vaccine? That is the only vaccine one of my family members will agree to get. <laughs> Um, I guess you'd have to stay stay posted and, and do some some work on Google to try to figure out or a search engine to try to figure out uh, where they were giving it. Yeah, and I think I mean we do I think updates weekly, knowing what's coming into the state. So that would be something. Uh, this person very quickly says, if I tested positive, should I have a retest before going around around others? Should you have a retest before going around others? So if you've been uh, so it would, one, it would depend on what kind of test you had, right? So if you had the RNA test saying that you were acutely infected, then um, the recommendation would be for you to uh, be quarantined at least 10 days to 14 days. If you were ill or very ill, you'd be want, want to be quarantined at least 21 days. Mm -hmm. If you'd had an antibody test and had been turned positive from that, um, it's hard to know because you may not have been sick or you may have developed antibodies from exposure many, many weeks to months ago. Okay, thank you so much for that. We thank you for your text questions today.